Welcome back to Braybirds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. All right, so we are at round four now, my favorite round. We had a great day of golf, man. Robert McIntyre and Ryan Fox for most of the day looked like they were just battling it out. And then kind of Robert McIntyre with his dad, you know, as his caddy, he started to falter. And then on the back nine, he just turned up the juice. He had three birdies in a row and then followed up three birdies in a row with an eagle. And all of a sudden he has a four stroke lead. All right, so let's look at my checklist. And the first thing you're going to see that we're going to look at are those top level stats. I introduced those for round three. But we'll look at par five scoring because they're only two par fives. And I know it drives all of us insane when our players get a par or worse on a par five. There are a lot of par fours. So we're looking at birdies or better. It's been music to some of our ears when some of our players have gotten eagles on par four so i mean that's like wow so definitely we need those players that can convert those par fours especially some of the easier par fours into birdies or better we're gonna look at those round four studs they're just some players that do better when the lights are brightest speaking of that we're gonna talk about those players that i believe might be feeling a little tight for one reason or another and then i'm gonna give you my top 10 targets because we know in round four position points matter so we can't just go to the bargain bin and pick a lot of players in the 30s and 40s and 50s i mean we need one or two of those players but we just can't have our, our lineup full of that we forfeit too many position points and then we're going to talk about those players outside of the top 10 that I like. And then I'm going to give you my DraftKings recommendation and I'm going to go over a recap and final recommendations. All right. So those top level stats. So for round three, we can see, and I have those in pink. Um, so we can see that the range of scores went from a five over par to six under par. So it's no surprise we had a cut after round two, obviously. So you had uh, players that are better players, better recent form, whatever you want to say. Uh, so obviously it's not a surprise that you didn't have players going Going down to nine over par. Uh, once again, we talked about yesterday that a good round would be between six and eight uh, under par and kind of stuck with that. So just kind of gives you an idea when you're kind of following your player, because sometimes I talked about it yesterday. Sometimes you're following your player in the morning. You think they're doing well, but depending on the tournament, they might not be doing well or they might be doing much better than you expect. OK, and then I said we looked at how many players uh, had a score of five under par or better. So it jumped today. We had seven players that had a score of five under par or better. So if you had, if you're one of those players and you're looking at round four and you're following your player and your smartphone, whatever. And if that, once that player hits five under, just know that you're probably in the 90th percentile. And then the mode, that's the score that shows up the most often. So for round three, it was even. So we had even, then it went to one under par, then went back to even for round three. So no surprise there based on how this course is played. And then the median uh, went to one under par. So that totally makes sense. Once again, we cut all the scrubs and so you have better players. So it's no surprise that the median score went up a little bit. All right, so who are those players that so far this season have done really well at par five scoring? So you have Mackenzie Hughes, the hometown boy, uh, that the Emperors, that's their current place. So he's in second place right now. He's been killing it with par five scoring. Then you have Mark Hubbard, who's in 36th place right now. In third place from par five scoring, you have Matt Wallace, who is in 20th place in this tournament. And then you have another Canadian, Taylor Pendrith, uh, fourth best in par five scoring. He's in 15th place. And then you have EVR in 26th place in the tournament and the fifth best par five scorer in the field. So who are those players that can convert those par fours to birdies or better? And the best person in the field is Michael Kim, who is in 20th place. So yeah, somebody you might want to consider outside of the top 10. And then you have Sam Burns, who's fifth. You have EVR showing up again, who's 26th. Uh, fourth place, you have Hitsasuni, uh, uh, 33rd in the tournament. And then fifth, you have Mark Hubbard, uh, who's in 27th place. Who are those round four studs? You have Mag Meisner, uh, who is in 36th place right now. You have Kevin Yu, 33rd. You have EVR showing up in all three of my key stats, uh, 26th place. You have Tommy Fleetwood, who's in fifth place in the tournament. And you have Hisatsune, uh, who's in 33rd place. All right, so who is feeling tight now? I mean, for whatever reason, uh, there are players that are going to be feeling tight. You can see 
four out of these five players they're looking for their first career win so i know you're thinking man robert mcintyre has a four stroke lead he's not gonna be feeling tight what are you talking about we've seen how these leads evaporate we saw how it flipped we saw how ryan fox took the lead and then you know mckin uh, mcintyre took it right back so yes this is his first career win he is definitely going to be feeling tight his dad is his caddy i don't know if that adds you know to his tightness or not and then you have ben griffin looking for his first win and then you you have the hometown boy and a lot of times when we say hometown boy we, we mean it relative but no Mackenzie Hughes grew up and I look check it out I'm using Canadian terms eight kilometers I guess that's five miles I don't want to do the math blah 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 probably five miles uh but we're in Canada eight kilometers from the course so this is really a hometown dude so obviously he's gonna have the crowd on his side but sometimes when you're playing at home it can actually make you more nervous and then once again Ryan Fox first career in and the same thing with Crow, with Crow, excuse me. All right, so who are our top 10 targets? I mean, McIntyre has a four-stroke lead. I mean, you can fade him a little bit, but a four-stroke lead, I mean, come on now. And then you have Mackenzie Hughes. I mean, who's to say he's not going to be that player that shoots six or seven or eight under par with the hometown crowd behind him? So definitely, and he's in second place. Then you have just the studs that are still out there. You have Tommy Fleetwood, you have Sam Burns, and you have Joel Damon. So... I mean, those are my favorite top 10 targets. But who are those players outside of the top 10? You got some guy named Roy McElroy just lurking in 11th place. No pressure. So with no pressure and just one round of golf, Rory can be that person that goes 7, 8, 9 under par with no pressure and end up, you know, T3 or something like that. Then you had a Canadian Taylor Pendrith in 15th place lurking outside the top 10. And then we have EVR in 26th place, Mark Hubbard. And then we have his Sassuni in 33rd place all right so let's go over the DraftKings and let's look at my favorite five players I'm picking one player from each of the salary tiers so 10,000 above you have three, three players and really all of them for whatever reason are good choices I don't think you can go wrong with any of them but for salary savings I'm going with Burns he's doing well with um with the par four birdies are better plus you can say you can save how much you can save twenty two hundred dollars pivoting to him over burns plus position points and then we're going but uh mcintyre and the nine thousands i don't have to explain to you why you need to pick the player or you should consider the player who has a four stroke lead and then we have evr you saw that he was ringing on all of my key stats so i like him because of that and then you have damon he's just in i mean he's doing well actually you know looking at his actual current stats He's doing well putting. He's doing well off the tee. He's doing well on approach. So three out of the four main key stats that I kind of like to look at, he's doing well at, and he's in the top 10. So really like him. And then we have Michael Kim, who we talked about, who is doing really well as far as birdies are better. So you can look at my recap on the screen right now. We can see that when it comes to par five scoring, we have the Canadian Hughes. When it comes to par four birdies are better, we have Michael Kim. And when it comes to those round four stores, of uh, studs, excuse me, have Big Mac uh, for round four. So my recommendations, once again, you have Sam Burns, you have McIntyre, we have EVR, you have Damon, and you have Michael Kim. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your comments. Otherwise, go out there and win that guap.